Uh, you know, Baylor's good, and uh, to beat a good team like that, a top 10 team who's very efficient on both ends of the court, um, you can't have foul trouble, and we had foul trouble. And that, you know, you get, we need Marquise in the game, we need Mike in the game. You know, Luke gave us a great effort. I, that's the most minutes I think of his career. He battled, hustled, uh, did what he could. Um, obviously, Nigel, uh, you think he can't come back. Uh, you know, people know him. And he keeps coming back, making plays. He was exhausted, but we had no choice but to keep going to him because he was the one that was giving us stuff. Um, obviously, Chachua loves to play against us. I think that's his career high. Um, you know, it's just uh, you know, it's just a tough thing to go against them. If you know, if we you know, it would obviously it would help maybe have Selton, but we didn't. I, I hope he gets to a point where and get some minutes in this weekend through Monday, but uh, we'll just have to see. We can't push him because that's. That's his career. So uh, they're they're just beside Joshua. They, they Bonner stepped up. I think his career high. Uh, Flagler uh, just makes key plays. Uh, James, you know, you know they they just smart. They know each other. They push it when they can. Um, we just we had to be a little smart, a little more disciplined, stay out of foul trouble, and then hope somebody else stepped up for us to give us a chance. But uh, you know, again, I'm proud of our guys. We battle. They care. Um, we came here to win. We didn't, but now we got to worry about getting Iowa State and moving forward. Bruce, you talk about foul trouble. Um, I noticed Marquise right after he gets his third foul, he immediately picks up his fourth. What did you tell him after after that? I, I just told him after he's got to grow up and learn. He's he's come a long way, guys. He, um, you know, from when we when he first got here over the summer. Uh, you know, he's one of the best steals in the, in the league. He's one of the best defenders in the league. He's one of the best assist guys in the league. Uh, but he's got, he's got to learn some, some games. You got to, you got to feel the game and, and when to go, when not to, um, he just sometimes, and he, he cares so much and he wants to do well. He just kind of overdoes it sometimes. And I thought he, he lost his poise a little bit and that was, uh, you know, probably the difference difference for him playing well to help us to give us something uh, somebody else beside Nigel. Is there any one thing about Baylor that makes him such a hard matchup? Their length and athleticism. You know, we've been able to survive against most teams playing small, and uh, you know, they just between Brown and uh, Jeremy comes off the bench and Chachua and their length that it just it just takes a toll on you as you go, whether it's defensively at the hoop. Or offensively, if they're getting their offensive rebounds, I think they had what they have at halftime, 13 second chance points. So I believe so that's out of 32 or 34. You know, think about that. And then they have a couple pick sixes. So think about that. So really, we did a pretty good job defending. Uh, but you got to do those other things to give yourself a chance. You had a foul to give right before the half. Did you want Mike taking that foul? I, I, in the huddle, I said, who has none? And I thought Mike said he did. And then he fouled, obviously, that it ended up backfiring on us. Um, I, I didn't know he had one. Uh, you know, what we, we talked about, we have foul to give. So that part was good, but not, not you know, because now he gets a quick one, and now he's got three, and now uh, he doesn't, obviously, puts us in a more of a bind as the game goes on. I would. I didn't say anything about Mark's first staff was really good. I mean, he, uh, you know, gave us a lot, gave us a chance. You know, obviously Nigel, you know, pretty much consistent through the whole game. Um, but we just needed one. Uh, you know, when we've won, you guys know we, we have balance at TCU four guys in double figures, and we just needed a couple more guys to give us a little more uh, learning experience. Keep moving forward. Uh, get ready for Iowa State. Why was Logan Landers unavailable tonight? He he got hurt. He's been hurt. He's had COVID. He's had it, 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 issues with breathing. He's had now he has a, a hip issue. He's he just had a heck of a time here since uh, since December. Is James Akinjo kind of like the second coming of Jared Butler for Baylor? Oh yeah, I mean he he's pretty good and and you know the one thing they are smart at using the ball screens and waiting and being patient and reading it. Uh, I I don't I don't have this stats here, but uh, you know five for fourteen that's pretty good. But the eight assists that and he that's usually you know he's usually more score, but for him to get eight assists uh, is is impressive and probably made a big difference. But a lot of them probably were to Chachua for 
for the dunks. Again, the paint, you know, is huge. 40-24, uh, you know, second chance is huge. Um, and their bench points, it makes a big difference. And those are the things they beat us. Obviously, we competed with them better. I, there's no doubt. I, and, and, you know, we, we fought. And then when we got punched in the second half, um, these guys stood up. We cut it to eight or ten, and, and we stood up. But we needed something to go our way, some bounce. They had to miss. I, I think Bonner hit that floater. Uh, you know, maybe Flagler hit a tough one. And then, you know, it's just now you're, you're fighting uphill against some good players. You're really committed to go at them in the first half, especially. Yeah, we, you know, we talked about attacking. That was our whole thing. You know, we had, how can, you know, again, our guys play hard. They care. They, they want to win. They, I think they, I, you can ask them. I think they enjoy each other. Um, but, you know, we had to find something and we said attack. And I thought we did a pretty good job attacking in the first half. Um, second half, probably not as, not as good to, you know, to get, get to that point. You still, and we only have eight assists. We have 15 turnovers. Uh, you know, just too many against a really good team that's efficient. Coach, I was just curious what you thought about the five guard lineup there at the end of the game, if that might be something you use going on. Yeah, we've talked about it. We've used it before. And, and, you know, we just sometimes just to change the pace. Obviously, Mark's got a big body, switch everything. But we got him in a little, you know, it disrupted them a little bit. We tried to go zone one time. I think it might have, we might have got it, but then they got the rebound. Maybe they 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 kind of got stagnant for a second, and then they got the rebound. But uh, you know, you got to find something to do to change pace of games. And you know, it it uh, you know I, maybe gave us a little chance, created some stirred up things, and gave us a little chance. And then it seems like whenever Mike McGurl comes close to double figures, you guys yeah, are it, usually it, right around that. And that's what I'm that saying. End. Other guys and. You know, we, you know, one of the things we talk about, one more pass, um, get it to him. You know, I, I, Mike's been very, very patient, um, you know, and, and, and doing what he can to help us. But, um, you know, we other guys got to create for him. And that, that's where Marquise, not there today, you know, we, we had to find ways to get Nigel shots, Mark gets shots. Now can Marquise create for other guys? And, and that – you know, when you ask about why they give us a little bit of problem, their length, their switching defense, you know, and things that uh, put us in a bind with that. When Marquise Noel picked up his fourth foul, how much does that change his offensive game? Well, he's, he's you know, it, it, one, it sits him on a bench, so he's not playing. So that really changes his offensive game. But, um, you know, he had a couple just – you know, you got to be smart. This one, he, he wants to win. It means so much to him. But now you can't, you know, we said attack, but not go crazy. We kept telling them all, oh, attack, but don't go crazy. And, and you know, just keep your poise and let the game come. Be disciplined. Uh, and for the most part, I, you know, I thought we were, again, you think about it at halftime, they have all those second chance points and a couple pick sixes. We guarded the heck out of them. So we were pretty good. We just couldn't sustain that. And then with the foul trouble, it just took a toll on us. How hard was scoring that many points tonight with all the defensive pressure they were putting on you? I mean, I was just really taking what the defense was giving me. Um, I was trying to be patient. Um, I knew we, need, we needed, every time we're successful, we have multiple scores and um, multiple, a lot of guys help. So I was trying to find some, some extra help from, from our teammates because um, usually we're pretty successful and we have multiple double-figure scores. Um, I think Luke was a, did a great job coming off the bench for us and helping us with that boost there. We just needed a, a little, bit, little bit more, and I think we could have been successful. Mark, why do you think it was hard for everybody but, but you two guys to get going on offense today? Uh, you know, like Coach said, and obviously they're going to focus on Nigel because he's our, he's our best scorer, but just, you know, they're switching defenses, and it was just different looks. Sometimes we, we were holding the ball too long so in their length, so we just kind of just got stagnant in the second half, I feel like, and uh, it was kind of tough to score. Casey really struggled in his six minutes. Uh, what, yeah. do you, what do you think you need from him? Uh, just more activity. You know, obviously, Chachua, Thamba. Thamba's not as talented as Chachua, but he, he's active and he plays hard. And you got, you know, Casey's got, you got to play hard. I, I thought Davion gave us, gave us a little feeling of last year. You know, he blocked the shot, had some energy. But, uh, you know, I, the one thing he kept doing, our coaches kept telling him, he would go, they'd come on the ball screen, the guard would shoot it, and he'd contest it. Now he could never get back and help with the rebounding. You know, the guards there, they can contest it, get back and rebound. But, 
you know, slowly but surely, I, I, you know, hopefully we get Davion to give us a little more. Uh, Carlton, I thought, was okay in the first half. Second half, a little bit. When they made the run, he just didn't have the moxie to, you know, to stand up against those guys. I think they were talking about how you were getting your eye checked after the game. How's that feeling now? Uh, I feel great. I mean, it was just a little, a little poke in the eye, but something I can get over um, should be good for to go. 30 point, you know, games this season. I mean, how does it feel to just be, you know, so dominant even with all the, you know, defensive attention you, you get? I mean, it just feels good, you know, to be able to hard work to pay off. But, um, you know, the thing that, that really matters to me most is, is getting the win. And every time that this, this didn't happen, we, we didn't take a loss. And that really hurts on the inside. Um, just being a player and be, wanting to be in the winner so bad that you're willing to do anything to make sure that we win. Um, so that's something I, I need to focus on and make sure that we, we get it done next time. You know, Coach talked about how missing Selton probably, you know, doesn't help on the defensive end. What do you think about that, you know, not having Selton out there? Yeah, uh, Selton's definitely a big part of our team, especially defensively, but offensively, you know, he's another uh, good driver. He gets to the basket and he can make shots. And also a playmaker, you know, he makes good reads and stuff like that. So, you know, obviously missing Selton's rebounding and uh, defensive, like we switched one through four with Selton and, you know, Garn Meyer and those guys. But I thought Luke and Mike did a great job tonight on def defense, you know, stepping up to the challenge. Did Baylor do anything specifically against you defensively in the second half? Uh, no, not really. I just had some, you know, costly turnovers. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I was just being aggressive and trying to get downhill and, you know, just running our offense, you know, what coach called, and I didn't really see anything different. Nigel, you guys won in Ames last year. Now that you go back up there on Saturday, is that something you can take with you into that game? I mean, yeah, definitely take some confidence up there. But we know how hard it is to play on the road. Um, Iowa State always has a great crowd, so we know it's going to be really a tough home uh, road game to play against. Um, but we got to come with that road dog mentality like we, we've done so far. Um, we got some good road dog wins at Texas, at TCU. Um, just another road game for us. Um, we got to be focused. We got to be locked in for these next couple practices, and we got to go in to Iowa State with a good mentality. Mark. Nigel talked about the road dog mentality. Do you guys have a chip on your shoulder when you go up to other places and play? Yeah, I definitely do think we uh, have a chip on our shoulder. And, you know, obviously everyone on our team, you know, is trying to prove that, you know, that we can, you know, make a run and have something special this last part of the season. So we're just taking it one game at a time and, you know, just keep that chip and aggressiveness each game. Nigel, have you been in the gym or uh, even with increased focus? It seems like you're getting your shots off. I mean, it just really comes to the same thing of um, just just being efficient with with my time. I would say. I mean, it's not it's not about how much time I put in, but being efficient with the, with the time I'm putting in. Um, just getting up shots, game ready shots that I'm going to shoot, and then when I get in the game, making sure I follow through um, and do the same thing over and over again. It's like a routine for me, basically. Um, when I get in the gym, just practice doing those shots, game game ready. But obviously, I need to practice some free throws because. Yeah, what the heck is with that? <laughs> yeah, I was talking about Mark too much. Now look at me, but. Yeah, I need to practice some free throws, obviously. So that's something I'll, I'll make sure I need to work on. I was going to ask you that. You feel like you left some points out there at the free throw line, especially. Yeah, that, that's not that's a terrible free throw shooting. I seven for ten. I mean, that's not the type of player that I am. I always known to shoot well from the free throw line. Just I guess I need to practice that more. Um, but I'll be better next time for sure. You guys had the success getting to the basket more, it seemed like, in the first half. Uh, Mark, did they, did, did they extend their defense a little bit the second half, or it seemed like you just had a harder time getting finding a path to the basket? Uh, in the first half, it was just kind of um, it was more open. Um, but the second half, yeah, it was definitely uh, they were a little more in the lane, and we were rotating, kind of trying to pass it out, and they were stealing it. So uh, I just think we just got to be smart and under control. and. And just keep being aggressive, though. You know, Coach always says when we get paint touches, we score more. So maybe just when we get in there, pass it out. I would think part of it is we had stops in the first half. And we got we didn't have, like, pure breaks, but we got where we got a nice drag ball screen. And, you know, Mark got in the paint, Nigel getting the paint, Marquis getting the paint. And then, you know, I think we got a nice back cut. You got the layup right mm -hmm. on the first half. So, you know, when we didn't get stops, now, you know, when they, their defense is set, and, and, you know, they switch so much. We've had a little success with some of our movement lately. And they switch so much, you know, and just not quite as good uh, tonight that now you got it. They, and you look at, they make you play one-on-one -on -one because of their switching. And they don't, 
they they don't allow you to. And then we still found Nigel on some of our quick hitters and stuff, and they screwed up. But uh, you know, our our pure motion cutting actions, uh, they they kind of nullify that. And I thought the second half, you know, they they just locked into us a little better. Mark, uh, you've played in a couple of pretty good leagues now. Where does Nigel rank as a as a guard? And do you think he's starting to get some recognition now? But Oh you, yeah, de uh, definitely. Nigel's really one of the best shooters I played with. Um, you know, I played with some good guards, but he's definitely one of the you know one of the best scorers I played with. Just you know, he really doesn't miss too often, and you know, it's fun to play with a guy like that. You know, who can you know if we need a basket or anything, you know, you can count on Nigel to make a shot. He's really efficient, and just and it's also good. He always wants to win too. You know, he's starting to speak up more and be more of a leader in the locker room, and uh, you know, it's really great to play with him. You know. Your, your I think so. You know, he, I, people have a hard time guarding him in it, and even everyone's so locked in on him now, and he's still putting up great numbers. So it's just it's great to see what he does out there. I got one more. Uh, you had a f few really tough layups, contested layups in the first half, and Mike had one really really tough layup in the first half. Do you guys practice contested layups a lot in practice? Uh, yeah, you know, we do grind out layups, you know, just drills we work on, you know, to finish at the basket. And obviously we were, uh, the word we used was attacking. We were aggressive in the first half and just, I felt like I could get to the basket and, uh, and score. I missed a couple, but I just kept going and was aggressive. How much does that, you know, make you happy, Coach, to see them, you know, get in the paint more and, well, and try I mean, to that's, score? That's the whole thing. When we have success, um, you know, we're pretty good at it. Uh, you know, getting the basket, making the right reads. Again, they, because of their length, athleticism, I think they they contested some. They made it tough on, because of the switching, to make the next pass to, you know, that, you know, it's, you know, when you drive and you got to, you know, jump stop, make that read. So, uh, you know, but it's, it, again, it's something we got to keep doing. And we got to, we got to, when we move, we're good. Uh, again, you guys talk about Nigel, but Mark, again, 17 and 8. And leading the league in rebounding, pretty consistent. I'm, I'm really, because early in the year he had, you know, a game here and then, uh, uh, you know, and then, you know, now what is it, five in a row? Uh, it's pretty good. And I just, I hope he keeps that motivated. You're not going to score every time, but you play hard, you do all the things right, you approach it right, you have some pretty good numbers. So uh, we just need, we need a little more. Like Luke has why, you know. He played so hard. He did a lot of good things, but a couple get one of those threes down. You know, it's just some little plays like that might have made a big difference. And then, coach, you guys have not played Iowa State yet. They're yeah, the only team weird, you haven't played. It? New coach. It's kind of a short week. Does that present any cha any extra challenges for you well, as a staff? I think, coach, um, the one will be even tougher is Monday. We played them, but I wasn't there. We only had what seven guys, and the coaches weren't there. Um, but uh, coach Henderson's had. Uh, quite a long time. He's been watching Iowa State. He, I know he'll be prepared tomorrow. Uh, these guys got to stay locked in. It's huge. We got to go get another road win. So, uh, you know, and, and it'll be, a, I think they're quad one. I would think quad one road win would be pretty good for our resume. Any other questions for these guys? Uh, no, in the SEC, you don't have uh, games like that too often. The tournament, SEC tournament, but that was really it. We're going to have two of them coming up, so we got to get ready. Nigel's got to get a cold tub, massage, got to get that body back. <laughs> Mark put a lot of, they got some energy, so. Uh, our chapel today was, uh, the, the theme was about perseverance, and that's what our team's got to do. Uh, I don't know if you know this, Chinese bamboo tree, when it's planted, um, it doesn't grow for five years. And it gets sunshine, water, nourishment, doesn't grow. But in that fifth year, it grows 80 feet, two feet, two feet and a day. So we're just gonna be like that Chinese bamboo tree, keep getting better, keep growing, and hopefully have a success at the end.